Hello guys, this is Vivek and today in this video I'm going to talk about uh, squirrel cage versus slip ring induction motor. What exactly you need to know? Uh, there are two types of uh, these machines that are there as an induction motor we know. But why they are uh, like these two types of machines are there? Why there is a squirrel cage induction motor and what is uh, a slip ring induction motor? Most of the people have confusion about this. So today in this video I'm going to discuss especially about these two topics. Now let us look at the squirrel cage induction motor. This is how a squirrel cage induction motor looks like. As you know by the definition, uh, squirrel cage induction motor has these copper or aluminium bars that are being shorted by the end rings at both the ends. And this looks like a squirrel cage and that's why the name is like this a squirrel cage rotor or a squirrel cage induction motor. Basically the stator has no change, the change is in the rotor. The rotor design defines what is the name of the machine. So in a squirrel cage motor, you always remember that the rotor looks like a squirrel cage and there is no change in the stator. Now how does it works? We know in an induction motor when a three phase supply is provided, a three phase rotating magnetic field is generated. And I have discussed earlier in one of my videos that how a rotating magnetic field is generated. So if you haven't watched that, I would recommend you to watch that video to understand how a rotating magnetic field is created. Now after the uh, ro rotating magnetic field is created in the stator air gap, what happens? Let's say the magnetic field is rotating, okay? This is a rotating magnetic field or RMF. So this rotating magnetic field as you can see is cut by this rotor conductors or bars, these aluminum or copper bars that are there. They cut the rotating magnetic field. As a result, uh, as these uh, bars are cutting the rotating magnetic field, a current is induced within the rotor conductors okay so in all of these conductors a current is flowing now this current is also sinusoidal in nature because the, we know the rotating magnetic field is sinusoidal okay the emf that has been provided to the motor is sinusoidal the rotating magnetic field is sinusoidal and hence the current is also sinusoidal so a current begins to flow through all these uh, conductors and this looks like the case of a lorentz uh, force where it states that a rotate that a, a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field feels a force so the same thing uh, is happening over here there is a rotating magnetic field over here and then there is a current carrying conductor within this so these uh, rotor conductors that are there they feel a force and they tend to move in a certain direction that is in the direction of the rotating magnetic field and as these are fixed to move in a in in circular motion this begin to rotate so this is the how a uh, squirrel cage induction motor works now why i am discussing the working of an induction motor you will get to know uh, very quickly now everything looks uh, good like the working principle or how the motor is rotating everything is fine but there is certain uh, important thing that we need to keep in mind while we are discussing a motor. By mo uh, from a motor, what do we want? Few things we need to keep in mind. First, we want that the motor current, uh, the starting current of the motor should be as low as possible. Second, we want a high starting torque. These two are the minimum required thing for a motor in any of the application basically when we are trying to uh, make a motor which is efficient and at the same time we are using it for traction and all, all other purposes these two things are the mo most desirable characteristic that a mo motor should have but a squirrel cage induction motor if you know it has high starting current as well as low starting torque why this happens let us get to understand why this happens let me erase this all first. Now for a motor to have a high starting torque, what we need to understand is that the maximum magnetic field flux or if I say it by phi m and the maximum current within the conductor, okay, these two should be aligned, okay. That means that the mag if this is the maximum magnetic field flux, this should be the current. Then we can achieve the maximum torque or it should be somewhere nearby that is the angle angular difference between both of these should be as low as possible but that doesn't happen here let us understand why we have supplied the motor through three phase AC supply there is a rotating magnetic field okay 
the magnetic field is rotating at very high speed let's say it's like 1500 rpm while the motor is still at standstill the conductors are at standstill so what happens this magnetic flux are being cut by these uh, conductors at a very high speed okay where, while they are still at standstill so these are cutting at very high speed that what what happens because of this the inductive reactance of this rotor conductor also increases why because we know that the inductive reactance is equal to 2 pi fl okay so it is directly proportional to frequency so the emf that is induced within the conductor is of very high frequency initially why because simply because this is at standstill while the rotating magnetic field is rotating at a high speed so this high speed emf or uh, sorry this high speed rotating magnetic field when cut by this uh, standstill rotor conductor a high frequency emf is generated as these are shorted at both of these ends a current of very high frequency begins to flow okay so the frequency is high that's why the inductive reactance is also high and due to this the maximum current reduces okay within the motor not only this because of high inductance as i have shown here because of high inductance if you just follow this circuit you will find that let's say the r term is not there or the r is equal to 0 so at a perfect uh, l circuit or perfect inductive circuit what happens let me draw this if this is the voltage phasor like this if this is the voltage phasor so the for a max for a uh, perfect uh, inductive circuit the current will start from here okay so this is what happening i am not drawing it uh, perfectly i haven't drawn this perfectly i'm sorry for that so uh, the maximum if you see that the maximum voltage point and the maximum current point it will go something like this so the maximum voltage and the maximum current point are not aligned there is a certain lag and of course in a motor the maximum magnetic field flux is directly proportional to the maximum supply okay so if say if let's say the this is the maximum of the ac supply at this point so the maximum of the flux will be also proportional to this so maximum magnetic field and the maximum current they are not aligned together in a squirrel cage rotor and that's why we don't have the high starting torque second thing why do we have high starting current here the, because it is because of the reason of because of the same reason that the high there is high inductive reactance there is full voltage so to maintain the max to maintain the constant mmf the current within the machine begins to rise and it is about 6 to 7 times of the full load current during the start which is very high current now this is what we discussed till now that this is the problem but what is the solution if you see this is an lr circuit so if i just say that if i will increase the value of this r that is the resistance within the circuit what will happen that the angle that is there that will reduce let's say there is a pure inductive circuit okay so what will be the uh, nature if this is the voltage okay if this is the voltage this will be the current this is the nature 90 degree now if i connect a r what will be the significant change we will find that the current phasor has moved to certain angle okay so the angle will be reduced so we cannot align them properly but what we can do we can reduce the angle between the maximum magnetic field and the maximum current so that we can get the at least the maximum torque that can be produced by the machine so that's what exactly we do in the slip ring rotor in the slip ring rotor you if you if you know what we do uh, during the start we add a set of resistors that are there okay you can see there are a set of resistors 1 2 and 3 these are uh, rheostats basically so they are kept at the maximum point now when the three phase supply is given within the machine the magnetic field that is there cuts the rotor conductors and uh, a current is induced now because there is a certain amount of resistance in addition to the inductance of the uh, uh, rotor conductor the uh, the lag between the maximum magnetic field and the current is reduced and hence we what we see that the angle between them is reduced so as angle is reduced the torque that is achieved by the motor is maximum this is what the difference between a slip ring and squirrel cage motor is all about 
However, uh, slip ring rotor looks uh, promising uh, because they can provide us great starting torque that we need at reduced current, but still these motors are obsolete. Uh, why these are obsolete? Let us first discuss the advantage as well as disadvantage of this machine in short. So, of course, this machine has high starting torque compared to squirrel cage induction motor, low starting current and smooth operation and wide range of speed control. As you can understand that we can have a wide range of speed control with, this help, with the help of this motor. But what, we, uh, what are the disadvantages? Let us see. The high capital as well as maintenance cost. Of course, you can see this is not a simple design uh, as that of uh, a squirrel cage induction motor. There are a lot of parts and machineries that are there, rheostats are there, then these slip rings are there. So it's, it requires a great maintenance and the maintenance cost is high. And the second point is just about the design that I said the design is really complex and losses during start. You can see that we have to add additionally rheostats here just for the sake of uh, uh, great uh, torque we, uh, we have to add these resistors and during start what happens basically there is a power loss within this stators uh, within, the, within this rheostat. So there is a losses during start. So these disadvantages that are there that makes the slip ring rotor quite unusable or they have a very limited use. But then you will ask me that what then we are using nowadays for great torque uh, speed characteristic or for uh, the torque and high starting torque with low starting current. So for that purpose the popular method is triple F VFD drives. Okay. Triple VFDs or they are also known as voltage source inverters also known as soft starters these are all uh, names that are given so triple vfd basically what it does just keep this relation in mind that v equals to 4.44 this is followed by any ac machine 4.44 kp kd that is pitch factor and distribution factor i am just denoting it by k phi m that is maximum magnetic field flux f that is frequency of the supply and n that is number of turns so within any AC machine this is followed this is the supplied AC uh, voltage this is 4.44 uh, factor K is a design constant M is maximum magnetic field flux F is frequency N is number of turns so you can see that all these things N K 4.44 these all things are constant the only thing that is variable is V F and what Vf and phi m. So what this machine basically does is that we keep V by F in such a manner that the maximum magnetic field that is there remains constant. Okay. So the we, what we do is that we reduce the voltage, we reduce the frequency in such a manner that the magnetic field during start is not affected and the motor starts at the maximum flux with reduced current because the voltage has been reduced the frequency is also reduced so the with reduced current the motor is start as well as it also builds up its torque in a very good manner so this is how a VFD works and hence we can use VFDs with this squirrel cage rotor and we don't need a slip ring rotor for that purpose so thanks for watching uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe I hope uh, this video was quite helpful for you and I am free to uh, have a discussion about anything that you are finding problem in and if you have any query or suggestion or if you want to add something kindly put that bill in the comment section below I would be more happy to help you and uh, share this video with your friends this is Vivek Chaube signing off thank you.